Now, just briefly, um, if you or a child is burned, um, how do you treat it? Um, well, number one, um, soap and water. You should wash the burn. You should not scrub it, but you should wash it softly. Give the child pain medication, perhaps some Tylenol, um, about a half hour before, but you can wash the burn. Uh, number two, we put a topical antibiotic cream. Um, usually Silvadine, which is an antibiotic cream. Um, however, if the person has a sulfur allergy, we don't use Silvadine. We use something like Bacitracin. So we always ask, do you have any allergies? And the person may say no. Well, when we ask, do you have any sulfur allergies? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So if, um, how do you treat it? Um, well, number one, um, soap and water. You should wash the burn. You should not scrub it, but you should wash it softly. Give the child pain medication, perhaps some Tylenol, um, about a half hour before, but you can wash the burn. Uh, number two, we put a topical antibiotic cream. Um, usually Silvadine, which is an antibiotic cream. Um, However, if the person has a sulfur allergy, we don't use silverdine. We use something like bacitracin. So we always ask, do you have any allergies? And the person may say no. Well, when we ask, do you have any sulfur allergies? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So if, if one has a sulfur allergy, we don't use silverdine. We use bacitracin or some other. Um, and then we use a non-stick gauze. You don't want to put the white gauze directly on the burn because it sticks. And especially with children, it sticks and it hurts, and they won't let you change the dressing. We use some type of non-stick gauze, like a Daptic or a Telfa or a Zeroform, and then we put the white gauze on. And we usually change the dressings twice a day. And here's an example of uh, hand burn. Uh, this is at the hospital, washing it. And then if there's any loose... Um, uh, burn skin, we re re remove that skin. And then if you're at home, sometimes, you know, the patients come in, not all patients are, are admitted, sometimes they go home. One thing I always tell parents is make sure you have everything set up before you start. So here's the silver ding, here's the non-stick gauze, you want to have your white gauze, have everything set up so that the dressing doesn't take a long time and it's less painful for the child. Uh, there are two ways to, to apply the, the, the silverdine. Uh, some place the silverdine directly on the burn. Here, directly on the burn wound here. And then they put the nonstick gauze over. And then they put the white gauze on. What I like to do is put this silverdine directly on the nonstick gauze. and then put that combination with the silverdine and the gauze on the burn. I find that it's less painful than if you rub the silverdine directly on the wound. So again, I put the silverdine directly on the nonstick gauze and then put that nonstick gauze on and then I put the, the, the white gauze on. Either way is fine, it's personal preference. I like to show this slide here. Just because it's white doesn't mean it's silverdine. Uh, I, I was rounding in a hospital, I won't say which one, it wasn't Staten Island, but um, uh, you see that the silverdine is here and the family had brought in some noxema or cold cream and the resident has the tongue depressor in the, in the cold cream. We've seen everything from uh, just uh, two weeks ago, uh, a young girl came into the, our, our um, outpatient clinic. We have a, uh, a clinic on Tuesday mornings on Coney Island Avenue and uh, she had been in another hospital. She came in with toothpaste. I have a great slide. I couldn't show it here. <laughs> but I have a great slide of this young woman with blue toothpaste all over both legs. So uh, just because it's cream and just because it's white doesn't mean that it's silverdine. So don't put those, um, and I'll leave, I'll leave that. And so just a couple of examples. I know it's getting late, but this is a, 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 a gentleman who was cooking, had a seizure. Uh, if you have seizure disorders, don't cook, um, because invariably you'll get the seizure while you're cooking. And this is a second degree burn. We washed it, debrided it, and this is at about, is that about 10 days, pink and dry, that's healed. And this is a third degree burn. This is a, a gentleman who dropped acid into his boots. He's working. Uh, usually with a third degree burn, I would operate, remove the uh, burn tissue, and do a skin graft. 
um, he opted not to have surgery. So over the next um, over the next six weeks, we put silvidine on it, and it finally did heal. And uh, lastly, uh, we're always asked um, uh, if my child is burned, my child has a burn, is there going to be scarring? You know, that's a major concern. And what I always say is that usually if a burn heals within two weeks or less, it's not so deep. So the probability or the chance of scarring is less. So two weeks is a sort of a, a and it, it doesn't mean exactly two weeks, but two weeks is sort of a guideline. So if you come in with a skull burn, you have blisters, 10 days later it's healed, then in retrospect that burn was not so deep, so the chance of scarring is less. If you have a burn and it's three or four weeks and it's still not healed, then that's a deeper burn, so the chance of a, of, of a permanent scar is greater. So remember about two weeks is sort of a, a dividing line that we use. This is a child who had a deep burn, the, and now the child has a, has a scar on the chest. Um, if the child does have a scar, there are things that we can do. Uh, one of the things that we do is uh, put a topical silicone gel. Uh, one of the products that we use is called Cica, C-I-C-A, and we found that that decreases the amount of scarring. Um, some people swear by vitamin E. There's no great studies that says that vitamin E works. Um, I don't think it's wrong to use it, but uh, it may or may not work. Um, 